Our next guest is a certified mindfulness-based stress reduction trainer, a mindfulness-based eating awareness trainer, a master life coach specializing in stress management and life work balance, and a certified chronic disease self-management trainer. He is also a certified mindfulness-based cognitive therapy trainer, Asian-trained Vispasna and Jhana meditation teacher, and a member of the Professional Speakers Federation. This fellow Canadian hails from Ontario woo, 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 and has been teaching meditation for over 25 years. <laughs> It is my great pleasure to welcome Ross Clark to the Permission to Shift main stage. <laughs> wow, that sounds pretty impressive. Y you are very impressive. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you could join us today. Well, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, I really, really um, appreciate what you're doing in your, your support group and everybody that's here. Uh, these are the big questions that um, that are so so important. So I, I, it's a real privilege to be here. Thank you. Before we begin, I like to start each of my sessions. I ask the speakers, the experts, the same question, and the question is, how did you get where you are with these? 800 beautiful designations and how, what was the shift you made that got you here <laughs> well i hit the wall um and but i knew that there was another way and so i gave myself permission to shift and that was uh that was some 30 some years ago i guess yeah it would be over over 30 years ago so it was it was out of uh, a whole a variety of different things that happened in my life, most of which I didn't have any control over, uh, but they were happening, and um, I just, I, I just really, you know, I really um, ran into despair and and physical um, issues. I had to resign my job. Um, you know, I lost my career. I lost my um, most of my life savings. Um, yeah, and I lost my health. So uh, there was a lot of a lot of things were changing in my life, and so it was. Um, but there was always this little spark that said, "There's another way." That you know, yeah, there there is another way, and um, you know, I'm I'm going to search and I'm going to see what what might uh, what might be my my way of um, understanding and working with everything. So give us a little taste of that journey, if you could. Uh, with regards to the despair or, or well, in you, what you way? You knew there was going to be another way, your way. And so what were the steps you took to get there, to find it? Well, first thing I had to do is I had to resign my position and take, you know, take a, a, a position that wasn't so demanding. And then I needed to start to take care of my body and so I, I started doing yoga and that was, uh, I, so I was doing yoga and uh, one day the yoga teacher said, oh, there's going to be a, a meditation uh, retreat uh, and in town sort of thing. So, you know, she invited us to, to attend. So I went and I, um, it was uh, on Saturday, I always remember it. It was uh, Saturday afternoon. I just, you know, just I could feel, I could feel the change happening, and uh, so you know, and uh, so then probably by about Sunday I started overthinking it. But uh, what it did it restored my energy for the next at least the next six six weeks. Um, so I from coming from a place of deep despair and depression fatigue and everything. I knew that uh, that this wasn't something that was imaginary. Um, all I did was basically sat in a safe environment and, and was with myself and uh, and that just just made all the difference. That's beautiful. So 
And I know you're you're a very modest man, but I found you through and I don't know how many people here will be familiar with this book, but it's it's legendary. It's wherever you go, there you are. And John Cabot Zinn, I believe. And I had I found you tangentially through I had read this book and I had reached out and you you responded to me and you actually did you actually work with just the institute or the person or how did that how did that happen? Well, I um, so I, I started running into difficulty in 1990 and 1995. I had to resign, uh, and then that's when I started to do meditation. And I met a Buddhist monk, and uh, here in Ontario, and um, you know he said, "Well, he said I've taught you everything I can teach you, but I can make arrangements for you to go to uh, Sri Lanka." And um, so he arranged for some monks to meet me there, and and I went in. My son and I went into um, silent retreat for a month. And then when I came back, uh, then I taught meditation and um, with the Buddhist approach, uh, meditation is taught at no charge. It's just, it's, it's just, you know, something that you do uh, because it's, it's helpful. And so I started to um, attend a lot of um, retreats in the States with, um, with different teachers, uh, Tara Brock, um, Oh, pretty pretty much the most significant teachers uh, that were available at that time, and I would uh, take a month off and I would go into retreat. And uh, so I I was in retreat at a place called uh, the Forest Refuge with um, the uh, with the retreat director, and. You know, I said, is there some way I can get some sort of a certification because I wanted to be able to, you know, have some sort of a credential. And he said, well, he said, um, what you could do is you could go to the University of Massachusetts and apply there and um, consider, you know, becoming a, a mindfulness trainer. So that's what I did. And um, yeah, so I, yeah, and I was also, uh, recommended for a Vipassana training. It's a three-year program, and uh, so I, I went to the University of Massachusetts and became um, a mindfulness trainer. And so then I started teaching face-to-face, -face, um, co-teaching with other uh, with other teachers, and um, yeah. So that was that was kind of how that all came about. So tell us a little bit about MBSR. MBSR stands for Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Training. So the idea is that we have all the resources that we need within us. Uh, we just need we just need a bit of guidance. Um, so it, it it goes back. It's over 2,500 years. Uh, John Kabat-Zinn actually. Um, the history was he was. Uh, at the University of Massachusetts, and it was in the fall of the year, and the, the doctors uh, had sat down around a table, and they had um, cases, they all had their files, and they had all these cases that weren't responding. The people were not prospering or doing well, and the doctors were pretty much at a loss. And John Cabot said, well, he said, I've been meditating, I wonder if that might help. And this was back in 1979, and it was kind of like, yeah, well, you know, Let's give it a try. So what he did is he put together a program which doesn't have any religious connotation to it, but it's just very, very practical. And he had a strong background in science. And so he developed this program and now it's it's worldwide. Can you tell us a little bit about what the program, what's in the program? Yes, uh, it is giving ourselves permission to go inside, to feel our sensations. That is the most powerful part of it. This is also where yoga really helps helps us. Uh, we typically can get caught with not being uh, aware of uh, what is happening within us. And that's kind of the early, the early warning system is to start to notice those tensions, those unpleasantness, because you know something's not, something's not happy uh, in there and it needs attending to. So the body scan, is a major part of mindfulness training. So what you do is 
typically first thing in the morning, you would just rest, you just lay on the floor and you just start scanning through your body and a step-by-step -step process. The key is, is not to judge whatever the sensations are and, and just being with the sensations of your body, it gives them permission to express themselves and it gives us courage uh, and insight as to what what could we shift, what what uh, what what needs attending to, and how can we do that with love and compassion. So that is uh, a central part is the is the body scan. And what would you do after? So part is it part one or is it the whole thing that's the body scan? How does how do you? No, there's there's that? attitudes. So. Okay. Uh, I've already mentioned one, the non-judgmentalness. So there are our attitudes. Uh, the first three are uh, not to judge your experience. Uh, second would be is just to be patient. So to be patient with the experience. And the third one would be just to be open-minded, uh, open-hearted. There might be something new here that I can learn about myself and about my life. And so those are practices or attitudes that you can include in a quiet time in a quiet space. Um, so, and then there, there's yoga, so that you can help to move the body and help to release some of that stored tension and, and the body stores uh, a lot of... Uh, typically it's said that we have um, a lot of incomplete experiences, emotional experiences, and so something feels unpleasant we go to our mind and we, we start to think, think, think. But mm -hmm. we haven't had enough opportunity for the, that emotion to express itself. So it's stored there. And by grounding, what you do is you provide the safe place, you know, the safe sensation, the safe place within yourself so that you can allow those uh, expressions, those unpleasantness to complete their their expression and to understand and oh okay now I better understand oh okay that's where the wisdom comes so the next time that a similar experience like that happens it doesn't have so much of an impact and the more you practice it then the more and more uh, the impact of the negative expressions uh, become diminished because now they're being understood and so you just grow and more um, wisdom and love and compassion just out of the fact of um, going inside and and really giving yourself permission to be with the unpleasantness and that takes courage and that's why we that's why I suggest the practice of grounding is, is, is to be um, always the place to start so was this part of what your health problems were that you were collecting all of this energy and it had nowhere to go. Can you tell yeah, me I didn't know what to do with it all. I was just trying to do the best I could. You know, I was a father with two children. My mother had Alzheimer's. My stepfather had cancer and um, and heart disease. My wife's parents had both had cancer. And my there's a turn down on the economy in 1992. Um, I lost my staff at work. I re-injured my back, um, a teenage family, and that has its own challenges. My wife had to be away with, with her parents, um, and I had, you know, developed new products, a new department, and my hair was falling out. I was down to 125 pounds. I, I was just, it was just too much. And you found that the process of yoga helped you release. Yeah, yeah. I would. Uh, I I went to the University of Guelph. That's where I when I changed careers. So there I could at noon hour I would go to a yoga class at the university, and I like you could hear me in the yoga room. I'd just be moaning. Uh, <laughs> there was just you know so much, um, so much had built up and accumulated in my body and. And, you know, I didn't fully understand everything that was going on, but I was really drawn to, to yoga. So, and that's why as part of the MBSR training is we need to come back, 
make friends and be, be gentle and caring with our bodies. Let's talk a bit about, you mentioned patience. It is really hard to have patience. It's hard to just stop, let alone be patient about stopping. Do you have any advice on that? I think it comes with time. Uh, yeah, patience, the more patient we can be with ourselves, the more patient we'll be with everything that we experience. So that could be with, you know, a long lineup at the, at the checkout counter. But we expect a great deal of ourselves. And that, that's where the gentleness and the care and the compassion. And so I, um, I put together and I put together just a little page on one of my websites that I thought might help explain some of this. Would you, should we yeah. have a look at it? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have okay. that on? Do you want to share your screen or do you? Yeah, want, I think yeah, I, absolutely. am I sharing it right now? Uh, not yet. Andy, <laughs> can you make sure that Ross can share his screen, please? So if you click your share screen button. Okay. Um, I'm not that familiar with Zoom, so. so it's at the bottom of the screen. It should be bright green, I think. Um, okay. I've got another program here that's running that might be interfering, so I'm going to close it down. Um, okay, I'll close it down and see if that helps us. Okay, yeah, so I've got uh, more, so I'm going to expand here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it is, it is, uh, here's the one that we would, I think this is the one we would like anyway. Share, it's just green. <laughs> we'll Share. find out soon enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does that, does that work for us? Uh, so this is the, this is what I put together for us for today. Nice. Um, so uh, this is on my the mindfulcoach.com site and it's something uh, uh, we can we can self coach we all have this beautiful inner wisdom and once we learn how to access that allow it to express itself Again, that's giving ourselves permission to explore and, and to, to do some of these practices. Then we can, we can start to work with it. So this is what I have um, put together for us for today. So the idea is shifting our experience of life with mindfulness. And why do we need to shift um, the permission to shift? Well, over here, this little guy said, you know, he can see that there's going to be change ahead. And life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. This is very, very old Chinese wisdom. So in the 50s, um, Maslow developed this hierarchy of needs. So what are human needs? And the first human need that was recognized is the physical. We need to have food, warmth, shelter. Uh, the next physical need was safety. So. That's, these are the basic needs, and that's where the grounding comes in, this grounding to be able to be able to feel grounded and safe. So, because emotions are very strong and powerful, so if we're going to be going to our emotions, we want to make sure that we have ourselves grounded so that we can, you know, we can start to touch them and, and you know, come back to being safe. This, the third or second level, he said, are psychological needs. Uh, so that would be the need of feeling that we belong, we have a group, um, we have friends, uh, then we need to have esteem, you know, we, we feel that we're needed, we're loved. And then the, the last stage of this learning and growing process in life for humans, he said, was self-fulfillment. Uh, so that we need to feel that our life has purpose and that we're able to, to fulfill who who we are as an individual. And uh, so these are the three levels of um, the hierarchy of needs. Now, what was also stated is 
you need first need to have your basic needs met before you can go up into the higher uh, realms. So this is where we need, you know, um, to exercise our body. We need good food. We need to be able to have that um, safety, that sense of, okay, I'm anxious right now. What can I do um, to feel safe? And that's where the grounding comes in. And so the next next one would be this is where we raise our energy. Um, you know, when we raise our energy, we the feeling's different, and we can deal with much more um, in life when we have that that feeling of uh, having more energy to to deal with them. And then the resting that's where the the quiet time. You know, that that's when you know the Sunday morning when we have some time to ourselves possibly where we can reflect and, and deeper understand. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is awareness. It's a, it's a, it's a faculty that we all have. So it's nothing that's, um, that we don't have. Uh, so if anybody wants to go to my site, they can read this. I want to be respectful of our time. Um, so mindfulness is awareness. And, have we? Okay. Um, yeah. So it's, it's direct knowledge of our body. So that's where the body scan comes in and the, the yoga stretching, the opening. And uh, to become aware of our feelings, you know, what, what am I feeling right now? And our thoughts, what am I thinking? Because these three, they interact with each other quite, quite beautifully. And we really, in order to have a fuller, complete experience and to move forward to shifting, these are really essential to understand and work with. So the, here you can see that that first attitude is mindfulness is non-judgmental, moment-to-moment interest. So if we we may have a, a chore that we you know we're not thrilled about doing, maybe it's doing the dishes, but if we become interested, oh yeah, I wonder you know just that. Yeah, and you know, the, just that sense of, oh, you know, uh, can I get these dishes uh, clean? And I wonder what the water is going to feel like. And, you know, this is going to be nice. We just have that sense of, of interest about whatever the task is. There's just a natural um, energy that happens. So you could, in very simple terms, say, we become interested in our body. We become interested in our emotions. We become interested in our thoughts. And that's love, uh, you know, because we're not judging, we're just interested. So this is a very wonderful form of self-love. And then we have uh, the mindfulness process provides the ability to change or shift our understanding of our felt experiences. So our felt experiences really drive our behaviors. A lot of it is on the unconscious level. And when we have the the courage, the interest, and the trust that we can be with some of our unpleasant sensations, then we can start to bring that love and care um, attention to them and and give them, allow them to express themselves and, and how that in the future we can we can work with these and, and shift. So um, mindfulness is it provides a gentle shifting process through attention, intention, and action. So I made this little triangle for us. So this, we, we could call this as the permission to change or permission to shift triangle. So we have attention. So attention could be attention to a sensation. And the attention is before we think about it. So I could maybe, I can feel on my left shoulder now I can feel that there's a bit of you know there's a bit of tension there so now I can have the end tension so I care about it so I'm going to have an action so what I did is I shifted my, my arm and that's my carrying action so this is a we always have access to we have attention we have intention and we have action. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the times we don't we don't give enough time just to be with the um, attention. I call it stopping and dropping. We we start to overthink, 
and uh, then because we don't fully feel what what we're experiencing our intention may not be as clear it might be to go to the fridge and get out some ice cream or <laughs> have another chocolate chip cookie because uh, we just want to feel better but then if we um, just stay with it we say ah oh, okay that wouldn't be so loving that's not the best choice long term um, I'm going to do something and, and this is really important and so this might be just as simple as saying a phrase of intention and I'll explain that a little bit further down in uh, in this screen that I put together. Any questions on this uh, tall end? Anybody have any questions? Anything? You can throw it in the chat if you have any questions. I'll get just keep going, Ross. If anything pops up in the chat, I will okay. let you know. Yeah, it's a lot of information. And so the simpler that we can keep our thoughts, our, our processes in the brain, they say three. That's, that's once we go over three uh, thoughts or ideas or processes, we tend to, we tend to lose, um, you know, the plot. We, we, over, we get into overthinking. So this could be an example of, of that here. So uh, practicing the permission to shift. So grounding, practice of just stopping and dropping, just stopping, coming back home to the body. The gladdening, the practice of opening and smiling. This does a lot of wonderful things to our hormonal system. Uh, the stopping and dropping really helps to rebalance our nervous system, our parasympathetic and our, nerv and our sympathetic nervous system. Uh, so these all have medical significance. And then the guiding, that's where we get the permission to shift. And that's where the phrases of intention that I, that I call uh, gives us that, that permission to, to choose another way to, to, to invite um, a change to happen or a new understanding. So this would be uh, a, a, an example of how we can get confused uh, and get caught in unhappy uh, stress for loops. So a thought happens. Thoughts tend to have an emotional flavor to them. And so if this is a negative thought, um, you know, I, I'm, I don't understand why my neighbor cuts his grass on Sunday every morning. Um, you know, and then we, you know, well, why, you know, we start, you know, overthinking it. Well, you know, he always does this, you know, does he not like me or whatever? Oh. <laughs> this, this can, you know, that can run away. And after an hour of this, you know, we're pretty much caught. We, we're not very happy with our neighbor. And so, it, but if we, if we catch that, ah, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not very happy right now. Um, and then we can say, okay, oh yeah, grounding, yeah, okay, well, maybe what I should do is I should just breathe in, feel my toes, just breathe in, feel my posture. And what happens is we start to break up those, those stress loops, those, uh, that overthinking, because now we're giving our attention rather than putting on more thoughts which is going to create more unpleasantness we have shifted that we've shifted that to a safe place in the body so the next thing when we start to feel grounded uh, and and grounding is a complete practice in itself this this is this is huge uh, just to be able to practice this but we if we want what we can do is we can gladden and so when we gladden, like I said, that helps to, we have what's considered four happy hormones that helps to release the horm happy hormones and cut back on the adrenaline and the cortisol. And so then we just bring up um, something that we, um, something that gladdens us, uh, you know, a thought that, that tends to promote a happier, happier feeling. And then the guiding, so this would probably be that Sunday morning, 
uh, thing where you know you've really had it with your next door neighbor and uh, you know just before you go over and give them a piece of your mind uh, you you do some guiding you um, you know just giving yourself to permission to consider I wonder hmm I wonder you know is this is more about me than it is about my neighbor huh mm. hmm. just that open-minded uh, warm-hearted consideration so again the practice results in um, keeping us safe and restores our energy and our mood and it gives us permission to change so uh, it's really good to have a plan or a process and uh, so one of the phrases is there is another way uh, there's always another way and um, so grounding and grounding our attention uh, what is the feeling oh, i'm feeling angry um, gladdening is gladdening is how to shift this feeling and uh, maybe to think of my granddaughter uh, and then um, guiding, uh, and the, there could be, uh, it's good to keep the guiding really short, the phrases, and to do them with the breath, with the in-breath. May I be safe, may I be happy, and may I be free. So those are kind of generic uh, phrases of intention that we can offer to ourselves. So can I ask a question? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> let's, let's say that I encounter a situation that triggers my fight or flight. And it's happened, say somebody says something to me and immediately I'm like, what are you saying? What, huh? Hmm? How do I interrupt that? What would be the, the, the point in this process where I can interrupt it? You would interrupt it right here at the grounding. So, and this is going to require practice beforehand. So one of the things is we expect too much of ourselves. And so we know mentally, we know that, okay, we know we could, or we could consider, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense to be grounded, but we haven't practiced it enough. We haven't embodied the practice enough to make it very effective. So if somebody says something and catches you off guard the best thing might be just to take and break the connection you know just excuse me i need i need to you know i need to i need to go or divert your attention uh, you're you're right not to make eye contact um, but you have to get yourself safe basically and whatever that needs means so the more you practice then the more that you can just um, you can just, um, because mindfulness is before thought. So mm -hmm. mindfulness is before the reaction. What mindfulness is, is responding to whatever the negative experience was. So one, uh, one um, person I know that um, had a really bad temper and uh, anyway, uh, he he was going in to buy a car, and we had talked about grounding and whatnot. And uh, anyway, he went in. The, the salesman was the salesman was just you know really kind of going overboard and you know getting pushy and whatnot. Typically, this person would have reacted, and so what he did is he just put his hand in his pocket. And he had his keys in his pocket. And so what he did is he just felt his keys. The keys were hard. And that diverted his attention enough that he was able to deal with the salesman and not blow up. Like if, if you go into the hospital and emerge, uh, sometimes what they'll do is they'll give you a piece of ice to hold, to put in the palm of your hand. Because that's going to change your, your, um, your attention to something physical. Mm -hmm. So it's a practice uh, and I'm, again, uh, not to expect to So would you be 
able to run us all through a, a practice of this. We could do it right here on the spot, consider yep. something that might normally trigger us or I, I'm not sure, it, walk us through, you're the expert. Okay, would you like to have, would you like that we just do each one individually and then put all three of them together or would you like yeah. to do all, all Let's three do at it. once? Whatever you think, what, what do you guys prefer? Start in the chat. Would you like to do each one individually and then put it together? Or do you want to jump straight into the full process? Throw it in the chats. What do you prefer? And we'll do what you, what you prefer. <laughs> full process. <laughs> okay, we'll go for it. We'll go for the full, full process. And there's also a question here, advice for gladdening, like an example. Uh, gladdening is so powerful and exact, just glad to be alive. Wake up in the morning and, and, you know, and there's a morning dread. If we can get to that place where we just reflect, we don't force ourselves, but we just reflect, oh, just glad to be alive. That, that just can shift the energy. So we, again, uh, we gladden the body. You know, we, we want to make sure that our body is comfortable. Uh, you know that we have enough food and you know and, and and that so it makes it harder to do when we're in a lot of pain but it's still it is still doable and then um, we have um, the emotions so that's what we're going to now is we're going to work with the emotion and so if you think of you can think of a person a person that you consider significant in your life a person who's a hero uh, you know, it could be a grandmother or grandfather, or it could be a good friend. That's really powerful when we can shift, um, have that sense of gratitude for another person. Very, very uh, effective. So, and then gladdening, our thoughts would be, just to use a phrase of intention, may I be safe, may I be happy, may I be free. May I live with ease? Those are all thoughts that uh, promote um, Love it. gladness. Gladness Love is really it. wonderful. Okay, let's walk through this process. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so we will um, we'll just invite everybody to, to maybe just stretch out a bit because we've been sitting. And I'm going to use the term stopping and dropping. And at any time that it feels uncomfortable, uh, you know, just, you know, just break the, uh, the process. And if we close our eyes, we have less distraction. So the invitation is just to gently close your eyes. Again, just that willingness just to stop and drop. Just come back home. Back, back home to these wonderful bodies. Sometimes they're not happy, but they are pretty amazing. So we have this intention now of grounding May I be grounded. And so the next subtlety is to breathe in. Just be aware of the in-breath. So we can accompany that with the, the mind likes to think. So we often, we offer little things to it so it can kind of be happy about thinking. So breathing in. I know I'm breathing in. Breathing in. I know I'm breathing in. Breathing in slow and low. Or may I breathe in slowly and lowly, 
So what we're doing right now is we're resetting our parasympathetic nervous system. Now it takes about 12 minutes to fully reset the parasympathetic nervous system, so we won't take that much time, but having your eyes closed, having gentle thoughts, inviting the in-breath to be slow and low, and on the out-breath we just let go. Breathing in, I feel my toes. Breathing in, I flex my toes. Breathing in, I find, feel, and flex my toes. The toes have a lot of nerve endings in them. And we can remember being a toddler. Uh, they're really important. Uh, so that's our basic grounding is learning how to walk. So the brain this oper this, uh, occupies a lot of real estate in the brain. And this helps to break those, uh, those stress loops. Breathing in slowly and lowly. Breathing in, I feel my toes. Breathing in, may I stop and drop. Breathing in, may I feel my posture. Breathing in, may I have a posture that's worthy of respect. Breathing in, may my shoulders be broad and wide. Breathing in, may my chest be open. Just stopping and dropping coming back home to these wonderful bodies. So this can also be called anchoring. So we have invited our attention to go to safe places in the body, especially our toes, our fingers and our tongue. These are all safe areas. Breathing in, may I feel my fingers. Gently breathing in, may I feel my tongue. And now if we feel comfortable, we can invite some gladness. And we can use phrases of intention. Here, may I feel happy. Breathing in, may the kernel, or may the corners of my mouth Raise. Breathing in, may my eyes smile. Breathing in, may my cheeks rise. Breathing in, may I be safe and happy.
breathing in. Remember somebody breathing in. May I say their name? Breathing in, may I feel safe and loved. And now we'll switch to the guiding. So if through the process of grounding and guiding, or I'm sorry, grounding and gladdening, if there was anything that seem to need your attention. It might be, there may have been difficulty in finding somebody that we appreciate. And maybe somebody came to mind that we don't appreciate. Maybe there's a place in the body that doesn't feel comfortable. So now we'll go to the third stage where we're going to guide. May I understand? May I understand my neighbor? May I understand my anger? May I understand what I deeply need? May I be safe? May I be happy. May I be free. And then we just give thanks to ourselves for taking this time to be with ourselves in a loving, caring, strong, and powerful way. So just thank you. Thank you to ourselves. And now we can just gently come back. And you can still be aware of the breath and the posture of the body, because those will serve us through the rest of our, our time together. Just stopping and dropping, opening and smiling, and then just resting and guiding our thoughts, our intentions. So thank you. Thank you for your interest. Thank you, Anne, for all the work and effort that you have done to make this possible. Thank you for all the people who are able to come and, and take the time to, to learn and to experience uh, this wonderful offering. Oh, thank you, Ross. I feel just rubbery. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and I knew that I would now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. So throw in the chats, guys. How was that? How did you enjoy that exercise? That was great. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, liberating. Oh, Jamila, that's a beautiful word. I agree. I agree. Getting, allowing yourself to go through that and just feel and release. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like, yeah, just touch and go. If it's too strong, if the emotion is too strong, we just go back to grounding. Mm -hmm. 
we always go back to where it's safe for us. But it's, it has been described as like, you know, in a house, there's also often a basement. Mm -hmm. And the basement is like the unconscious. And so if we, if we, you know, just always live in the living room, um, whatever's down there in the basement is usually getting bigger and, and bolder. So if we from time to time just go and we open up the, the door to the basement and allow some of this unpleasantness to come up, when it goes back down into the basement, it's not as big and strong and as powerful. And the more we do that, the smaller it becomes and the more we understand it, the more it's understood and loved and cared for, the more it transforms into more love and compassion. Thank you so much for this insight. Before we wrap up, I have my question. I think you saw the last session, so you know what's coming. You're standing in front of your younger self, Ross, and you need to shift. And I know you had some big shifts to make. What would you say? I would say ground. Just ground, because everything's there. Um, the, the way our brain is 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 so beautifully made. By giving the phrase of intention, it activates a different part of our brain, and that brain's going to be looking out for ways that we can feel safer, that we can feel happier. Because now we have we have given permission for through that phrase, through that quietness, through the power of being gentle and caring. Uh, that part of the brain is going to become more active and it's going to mo notice more in whatever our life is. Because if that's our goal is, is love and happiness, it'll find it for us. So it's a, kind of like one saying is we just do the practice and then we let the practice do the work. Ross, thank you so much for that reflection. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And I wish you a beautiful afternoon. Well, thank you so much. Ross has some beautiful things that I think are massively valuable and I would love to share with everybody. He has tips for mindful self-coaching. He has free stress reduction tools. He has free stress relief course. And obviously the mindfulness-based stress reduction. This man is, as are all of my experts, incredibly generous. <laughs> Check out his stuff. It's, it's powerful. It's very powerful. Thank you, Ross.